I'll start with a short invocation to the Gurus. ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣವಾಗೀಶಯತೀಶ್ವರಾಭ್ಯಾಪ್ತಚಕ್ರಾಂಕಣ ಭಾಷ್ಯಸಾರ ಶ್ರೀನೂತ್ನರಂಗೇಂದ್ರಯತ ಸಮರ್ಪಿತ ಸ್ವ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣಮಾರ್ಯ ಗುರುವರ್ಯಮೀಡೆ ವಿರೋಧೆ ಕಾರ್ತಿಕೆ ಮಾಸೆ ಶತತಾರಾಕೃತೋದಯ ಯೋಗಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮಾರ್ಯ ಗುರುವರ್ಯಮಹಂ ಭಜೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೂರೀ ದಾತ್ರ ಜ್ಞಾನವೈರಾಗ್ಯಭೂಷಣ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ವೆಂಕಟನಾಥಾರ್ಯ ವಂದೇಹಂ ಯೋಗದೇಸಿಕ ಶ್ರೀಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಅವಿವಾನ್ welcome to the concluding session of bilwa 2022 and i'm very happy this time throughout the bilwa we had some wonderful speakers and uh, i am mauli vaviskar founder and executive director of ramru yoga and sound therapy studio every year we celebrate bilwa throughout the month of july and we choose different themes mainly related to the indian yogic traditions and its knowledge systems and invite scholars from across the globe to share their knowledge with us last year bilwa's theme was cultural appropriation of yoga and the necessity to embrace the inherent indianness of the yogic tradition and this year as you all were following us you know by now that the theme for this year was celebrating the great teacher and guru shri t krishna macharya and his holistic teachings in the kyam tradition as taught by his lifetime student and son shri t k v desikachar i am also very happy to announce a very valuable and in depth program that damru is announcing this october in collaboration with krishnamacharya yoga mandiram it is a 800 hour teacher training program and uh, today also towards the end so because we have announced this training there have been a lot of questions that we are receiving so today towards the end of my session i will also address those questions to resolve the queries that a lot of people who are wanting to participate in this teacher training program are sending me so i thought i'll just share it in this video on the public platform coming back to our today's talk uh, let me also share you that this yoga festival bilwa is conducted under the wing of damru foundation damru foundation is a public charitable trust and it is founded with the aim to promote and implement the traditional yogic sciences and increase awareness about wellness and harmony in that segment of society who are in dire need of wellness holistic wellness but may not be able to afford that so uh, as we work towards this segment of the society if you wish to support us in our effort do consider contributing to the damru foundation you can find a link to the payment options in the description box below and your contributions will definitely help us support more such people and at the same time bring about more such valuable content and scholarly speakers from across the globe and share some precious jewels related to yoga with us so today as we conclude bilwa 2022 I take this opportunity to thank all the speakers who graced the festival 
and shared their knowledge with us. And uh, everything came together so beautifully, like we had envisioned when we planned this season of Bilva. So a very quick run through that I want you to take you on. So we started with S. Sridharan sir, who unfolded the vision of Shriti Krishnamacharya and Shriti Kevi Desikachar and the basic tenets or concepts of this tradition of teaching yoga. Later, once he established that ground, that opening ground, we uh, met uh, Ms. Geeta Shankar, who explained us the fundamental principles of asana in the KYM tradition. And uh, from the Krishnamacharya Yoga Mandiram, the next speaker, Ms. Sangeeta Kanan, actually took us into a guided asana practice. So she was showing what Geeta Ji talked about, the fundamental principles and in application, she showed us through a guided practice. Later, we went with uh, Mr. V. Srinivasan and uh, he talked about uh, yoga-based interventions for therapy and uh, the KYM approach to that, which I felt was very important because the kind of uh, therapy practices that are prevalent today, he unfolded a very beautiful structure which we could follow as therapists when we uh, get care seekers and uh, following him dr lata satish and dr helfried krishe from germany both of them they talked about the psychology of yoga and what a session it was and how psychology yoga the manas the chitta the vak everything comes together and aligns it was a wonderful enlightening session by them then we came to Mr. E. V. Balasubramanian and he talked about uh, TKV Desikachar as a healer, as a, not, as, not just as a teacher, but as a healer and the qualities he would show when he would be dealing with care seekers. Again, with uh, the next session with Janaki Raman sir, we saw, he took us into a very peaceful guided practice of pranayama in KYM tradition and how breath can completely transform us and how powerful it can be. Following that, uh, Ms. Saraswati Vasudevan took us on how to apply yoga in different stages of life. And this is a very beautiful aspect of the KYM tradition where they talk about the kramas, the kramas are the sequences where as children, as young adults and adults, as uh, the elderly population also as uh, driven through the phases of body and maturity of the mind how with various kramas the shurishti krama the shakti krama the sthiti krama and the adhyatmic krama and then also the chikitsa krama and how all these overlap so it was a beautiful uh, walk through she took us through it was then followed by the master Srivatsa Ramaswamy, a very senior student of Sri P. Krishnamacharya, almost spent 30, uh, 30, 40 years learning from P. Krishnamacharya. And he talked about the yoga texts, Yoga Rahasya and Yoga Makarna. Uh, they were written by P. Krishnamacharya. And the beautiful concepts of yoga working not just on the external body but the internal organs and then going beyond the body. Ms. Ritya Jagannathan, she talked about chanting and bhavana as a tool of yoga therapy. Today I am also going to chant out something to you and we will see how beautiful that practice also how profound that practice can turn out to be. But Nritya ji took us step by step into how these practices work at so many levels and how it can enhance therapy, yoga therapy as a tool. We also met Ms. Jillian Lloyd from the UK and she was a student of Sri P.K.V. Desikachar and her life experiences she shared with us uh, of how it was to learn from a master. And then none other than Ms. Mekala Desikachar, daughter of Sri TKV Desikachar. She talks about TKV Desikachar as a father and as a teacher. 
and how growing up with a legend father and a grandfather and how it was like while we covered various aspects of body mind breath concepts principles shri ramesh kanna later took us also into special practices for special children and such children with special needs and uh, how compassionately yoga can take them in its fold and how miraculously it could shift or transform their lives so with that quick overview with me today we are going to chant the yoga sutra and like i told you we will also talk about the upcoming teacher training program and i'll be answering all the questions that we have received from the interested people so when we talk about chanting when we talk about sound as such certain sounds have that uh, innate ability to create coherence within us and as the coherence comes in we sense a kind of harmony that gets established in not just in us but in everything that we do and more the harmony more the chances of resonating with similar harmonies around us so this resonances that we create it doesn't stay as me and and somebody and something gradually while you keep on practicing this it helps us up level and reach the ability to connect to the quantum field the larger field and make a shift in the consciousness so when we talk about chanting in specific when we are using our voice So I'm talking about chanting aloud. Chanting is not speaking. Chanting is not singing, and it's not even just a religious expression. Chanting becomes like a primary mode of connecting to one's own self. So chanting is a mode of expression, and how it helps. I'll tell you how it helps connecting with our own self. So when it becomes a mode of expression. it brings our mind our thought and our speech the manas the chitta and the vak together and you know that the manas chitta and vak are very closely linked to each other so when we chant we kind of create a flow or kind of we can say a purification or alignment that happens between the manas the chittas and the vak so this alignment is kind of a, a pathway or a portal that opens up the connection deep within ourselves and this is also why because the prana starts flowing easier there is this feel good uh, feel good factor that we feel or that sets in after chanting a lot of times here at damro when we have our chanting sessions when the session ends everybody wants to just stay there in silence enjoying that blissful kind of a feeling that chanting evokes especially when we are chanting mantras it is like uh, it's like chanting magical sacred sound formulas and when you chant over a period of time it just feels as if uh, something happens as if it fuels and brings into existence something so powerful which is always there within us it's just that it is manifested now so um gheranta samhita uh, that's where there's the shloka which says that uh, put the self in the sound and sound in the self and when the self is sound all else falls away why like say this i would actually invite you to do some form of chanting because this is so experiential that while i'm speaking about it when you do it this experience of bliss gets generated when we chant when we speak up when we open up it also opens up our hearts and whatever there is that is pented up there and we do that a lot of times most of the time suppressing so many things unspoken unspeakable at times chanting just gives an avenue to that release it works like a cathartic process 
and also allows people to connect with it very playfully it's not something is very serious very playfully happily blissfully you connect with it so you would have seen that every indigenous tradition olden cultures will have a chanting practice embedded within the tradition because it is a primordial connection between us and the creative force from where or the source from where we have all come from so every time you are chanting you connect to that source now while we talk about these higher realms of connections let's also see how chanting can help us in our health and well be in our day to day practical lives so see uh, when we chant chanting is a function of exhalation it helps engaging the respiratory apparatus and hence it promotes optimal breathing and harboring efficient lung capacity especially in these last 2 3 years of pandemic we have come to realize how important it is to develop a strong efficient lung capacity as well as a sense of well being uh, which boosts our immunity so chanting can help doing that and you could have also observed that when chanting is incorporated with breath breath can be like really really extended you can have a longer breath especially when you observe the quality of exhalation like i said chanting is a function of exhalation this uh, quality of exhalation is very important marker of good health or an important uh, think for the maintenance of good health so when we chant and when we are consciously exhaling and promoting enhancing longer exhalations thereby we also properly facilitate the functioning of the apana vayu and hence also a detoxifying the whole system now while we talk about this body the lungs as an apparatus the detoxification as well as the immunity chanting on the other hand also brings about a lot of attention focus ability of retention and it's so important therefore it helps maintain or rather uh, slow down the process of uh, brain deterioration which we are very commonly seeing now earlier it was more in the elderly population now you see even the younger people uh, because of the work stress and work pressure and lifestyles we losing that capacity for retention for focusing for a long time we want short uh, videos are getting shorter and shorter all content is coming online all information chanting will help us to stabilize and bring our attention fully to the present moment while i say this of course in the elderly population uh, things like dementia alzheimers are also increasing chanting helps there as well and thereby we can also say that chanting brings about a relative balance in the emotional states it helps in articulation of the subtle body and uh, so for example every alphabet in the sanskrit varnamala all the sounds the ka kha ga gha and the whole varnamala they act like internal acupressure treatments for the whole body because these sounds the language sanskrit is called a divine language because these sounds are the sounds heard by the rishis in deep states of meditation where they could listen to the inner sounds of the body and it was put forth to us in the form of the varnamala so if you want to get a acupressure treatment just say the sanskrit alphabet you are doing it and because when you uchcharan shuddhi the pronunciation has to be correct so when you can articulate that sound sounds i would say of the varnamala correctly each of this alphabet corresponds to a specific marma sthanams in our body and that's how it becomes so powerful chanting also gives an outlet to safely express that which is unspeakable and suppressed deep down within us we talked about this earlier i feel this is very important so i'm reiterating it that a lot of times we have things which we may not be able to share 
but just by chanting we are releasing that from somewhere very deep within us it's opening so you see chanting unfolds enhances and aligns various facets of our being so at the first level we see how chanting can help the breath the stability in the mind the calmness and relaxation in the muscles at a second level uh, it brings about a feeling of happiness as if you are touching that invisible source or the core at the third level it also facilitates analysis and inquiry leading you into the gnana marga or gnana yoga paths so when we are creating this sounds one is the sound itself the nada but there is also a profound meaning attached to it and when you start getting into the analysis or the inquiry the wisdom quotient starts getting involved and at another yet another level something very mysterious and encompassing happens that seems to set in when we chant it's it's something like i can say the sense of clarity sets in and uh, well so we could say whether the purpose of uh, whether our purpose is moving the body freely or keeping the mind flowing or purging the emotions or inducing meditative states whatever the purpose the purpose is could be different but the mode is chanting so i'm not going to speak uh, i just wanted to give a brief idea of what we are doing before i start the chant and specifically now when we talk about the yoga sutras this is more applicable to uh, those who are into yogic sadhanas yogic practices and those who are into teaching yoga so i'll i'll, I'll tell you a short story uh, my younger brother he used to stay in mumbai some years back and on his uh, in his vehicle he would be traveling from one place to another and which was a longer distance and like we all do he would put it on the google maps and every day from destination a to destination b and he was going for many days on the same route from a to b and the google maps would guide him turn left turn right turn whatever the shortest path all that you know one fine day uh, 25 30% in his uh, route the phone battery discharged and the google map shut down and he had no idea where he was he felt completely lost because all these days even while the path was same he was not observing he was in his own world while the google would guide him awareness was not there in the journey in the process so what happens when the signal is down versus when we know one destination a to destination b we know the roads by heart what happens you know the road some days you would want to explore the by lanes and gradually you you are aware of the whole landscape so well that some day if there is a traffic jam you will know where to take the by lanes yeah so uh, deeper connections get established so now when we come to the yoga sutras we all have yoga sutras written in the book we all have their translations which we can refer to when needed but when you start chanting them also understanding them and also chanting them the sound of the sutras start residing in our heart gradually as they grow they can create cross connections and deeper experiences and meanings first to your own yoga practice you will see a change in your own practice and experiences and connections and also when we deal with care seekers who come to us for therapy sometimes destination a to b doesn't work there are cases which will be unique you might have to go for by lanes for that you will be able to be aware of the landscapes the deeper shorter smaller landscapes so 
that's what i would say that you should be learning sutras uh chanting is some multi dimensional practice using invigorating sound to inform our body our mind and the spirit so by focusing our mind voice ears heart on one sutra over a extended period of time or say even for a shorter chanting practice like this i feel the sutra expands gradually it nourishes us and after spending some time with the sutras the meaning and the value to one's practice will start resonating and there is a exchange that happens it informs one's practice as well as the daily life and it starts showing up in life around us within us everywhere so patanjali yoga sutras as you know it has four chapters and 196 sutras sutras are like threads of wisdom that knowledge that leads us to overcoming obstacles to unfolding our own higher potential i would say uh it's like a road map to navigate life super efficiently and every word within one sutra sutra is like an aphorism so every word within a sutra is significant and each sutra leads to the next all interconnect and uh, carry enlightening potential for the student who seeks to understand the larger meaning so with that i think you should experience the chanting of the sutras and practice it for yourself to know what i talked about till now about the effects of chanting i will not do the whole yoga sutra of course it's very long we will cover the first chapter the samadhi padam so we are uh, chanting it word by word so there is a samadhi vichcheda but that is more so that the listener can understand each word later as you progress in the practice you can use the samadhis and do the whole sutra so it's divided so let's start with an invocation to the gurus योगे न चित्तस्य पदेन वाचा मलं शरीरस्य च वैद्यकेन योपाकरोत्तं प्रवरं मुनीना पतञ्जलिं प्राञ्जलरानतोस्मि आबाहुपुरुषाकार शंखचक्रसीधारण सहस्रशीरस श्वेत प्रणमा पतंजल श्रीमते अनताय नागराजा नमो नम अथ सीपाद अथ योगाशासन योग चित्तवृत्ति द्रु स्वे अवस्थान वृत्तिप्यम इतर वृत्त पंचत क्लिष्टा प्रमाण विपर्यय विकल्प निस्मृत प्रत्यक्ष अनुमान आगमा प्रमाण विपर्यो मिथ 
समाधि पातंजलयोगसूत्रे प्रथम समाधि ओ शांति 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 सो दैट वॉज द फर्स्ट चैप्टर ऑफ योग सूत्र समाधि पाद आई होप दिस इंस्पायर्स यू और एटलीस्ट जेनरेट दैट इंटरेस्ट इन यू टू स्टार्ट चैंटिंग not just yoga sutras any chant if you belong to or if you have a particular belief system you can take from your culture your tradition but start chanting start expressing and opening opening up yourself and you will see a beautiful alignment or just the same life same people same situations but you feel more uh, happier i would say or more complete express yourself enjoy chanting that's what i would want to say that's for today's session and like i told earlier before i started that towards the end because there have been some questions that we are already receiving uh this is the time where i open the forum uh for some questions that i could answer related to the teacher training program we are offering at tamru so those who are not aware of this a very short uh, introduction we at damru are extremely grateful to the divine forces and to the resonances that we are attracting now so damru is collaborating with krishna macharya yoga mandiram and we are offering an in depth yoga teacher training program perhaps the first of its kind in gujarat so we are used to the 200 and 500 hour teaching models but we all know that that is not enough so this is a 800 hour module of teacher training but also more than about the hours that we put in it is a rigorous program of 18 months if yes, you heard it right it is not 28 days it is not 6 weeks it is 18 months but because it is a long program and because it is going in depth and lord asks for a lot of your commitment there have been a lot of questions regarding this so even before i take up questions i'll tell you we are starting on a very beautiful day vijayadashmi this is a very auspicious day to start any learning or any new venture that you are going about so that's 5th of october and we will end uh, 18th of so this is 5th of october 2022 and the program concludes the convocation would be on 18th of february 2024 so that's the dates of the program also the way we have designed the program is something very special and making it relevant to today's time so uh, we have a uh, mixed up the in person modules as well as online studies and we want people who are already into yogic sadhana or who are genuinely interested in learning or moving on this path we will be hand holding you so there will be some days uh, 7 to 10 days that you are like full day at dabru doing the practices with the teachers in person and then you go back to your work to your place from wherever you're traveling from and every saturday sundays 3 hours in the morning we will need you online and again the study continues like that like these so there are in total six modules so like one module you come to dabru one module we do online again one module you come here at dabru one module online and so on for the third time we do that three semesters six modules so that there is a constant back and forth interaction and a constant evolution 
and you start learning experiencing and that's where questions come about and then that they get resolved so that's a combination that we've come up to make it more relevant to today's time and our lifestyles that we have so my team uh, if you're there around we can start with the questions now maybe you could ask and i can start answering thank you molly ma'am i guess i'll start with the questions um the first one that i see here is will the trainers be certified professional trainers yes we will have teachers uh, flying in from the krishnamacharya yoga mandiram and these are senior teachers from the kyam tradition so definitely the trainers will be certified and experienced to teach thank you the next question is um how do i register to the program so yeah just to uh, ensure that uh, right people are there right kind of group is there there are three steps that you need to follow to register for this program first step when you go to our website uh, or you can call us at namru number you will get the number in the description box um, or on your our website www.namru.in you'll get us application form a short one just so that you know, we know that you're interested then there is a second form which is an in-depth application form where you will be asked many questions related to your interests in yoga and the references and then the third step would be a interview kind of a process or a screening process where a panel of members will get in touch with you and uh, from that the final people who are screened will be the part of this program thank you ma'am um the next question is will i get an in person training in this program well uh, this program is divided in six modules and there is a reason we have spread it out so that you start practicing learning evolving so the first the third and the fifth module are in person at damru studio while the second fourth and sixth module they will happen online so that's the structure thank you the next question is when will i find out if i have been accepted into the program yes so like i told earlier there is a screening process that we so that we ensure that we have correct right participants with right mindset and commitment and intentions uh you will be filling up an application form and we will require two letters of references from you guys and also later there is a interview and a screening that will happen from which the candidates who have applied we will be selecting a small number of people who will be eligible for the training thank you ma'am um next question is can you tell me the structure of the training and what are the durations and the uh, how many semesters so uh, there are three semesters and each is divided in two modules so total of six modules are there so the structure is like uh, there will be a in person module so every semester the first part so the first third and fifth module will be in person at damru studio where for 7 to 9 days you will be doing a full day immersion which is a very in detail interaction with the faculties and then for the online modules the second fourth and sixth you will be joining us online and that also there are people who have asked who are already working so we kept those modules over the weekends also in the early mornings in their time so you have your whole weekend the day through you but three hours in the morning every saturday and sunday and these uh, every uh, semester so first and second module one semester will be followed up by assessments and exams and then towards the end there will be a dissertation that has to be submitted after which you will get your degree certificate thank you ma'am the next question is will i be able to teach after completing this training program what kind of certificates will i receive as part of the completion of course you will be able to teach it is a teacher training program and also i'll tell you about what all certificates you'll get so first you will get a certificate of krishnamacharya yoga mandiram and damru of this 800 hour teacher training program that you've done 
you will also get a certificate of uh, 500 hours from the indian yoga association because that is their structure so the higher it is 500 for them and uh, those who have uh, done the yoga certification board you will be directly eligible for entry level 3 which is the highest level in ycb so you'll be eligible for that so these are the certifications you'll get hi ma'am the next question is Will there be an exam or a test at the end of the training which I need to clear to get the certification? There will be a lot of tests and assessments and this is also required so that we are sure whether we've learned or not and if required we can always revisit things. So after the first semester you'll have your exam. Suppose somebody doesn't clear they will get a second chance of giving that same exam after the second uh, semester. But in the final one, you will have to clear. And following these exams and the vivas, you will also have to submit a dissertation, post which you will get the certification. Thank you, ma'am. The next question is, in this training program, will you be providing any books and reading material, practice material, etc.? Yes, you will be getting the handouts and study materials. Um, it will be taken care of uh, whatever that you study, the subjects that you go through, you will be provided handouts. And uh, at the same time, uh, we are as a part of this training, each one of you have to choose one mentor. And every month, you have to do a one to one session with your mentor. So that is a very good avenue where you can actually resolve all your queries. So it's a very uh, in depth and, and so, so we don't need to worry. There is a lot of hand holding that happens along the process. And uh, without the group that we take, we ensure that each one of you will get what you require. Along with that, there are a lot of uh, reference materials and study materials that we will be sharing. If they're available online, we'll be sharing the links. Otherwise, we can share the names of the books or papers that you could refer to. Thank you. The next question is, Will I get an opportunity to visit Damru Yoga Studio and the KYM Center during this training? Yes, Damru, you have to come to Damru. That big part of her training will happen at Damru. Uh, we will also do an internship at Krishnamacharya Yoga Mandira. And uh, as a part of your internship, you will be visiting Chennai once. Yeah. Thanks, ma'am. The next question is, I do not live in Gujarat and I have not visited Ahmedabad before. Will Damru be supporting us with some guidance? And similarly for Chennai also, I have not been there. Will Will you support us with some suggestions of where to stay, etc., so that you know we'll be more comfortable? Absolutely. Uh, also, don't worry about this. Uh, I understand that you're coming to Gujarat for the first time, but uh, Ahmedabad is a very well connected city so you have the airport the train station connected through all modes of travel so it's a very easy access place and once you are here we will damru will give you options or guidance of where all you can stay of course the choice will always be yours and you will have to do your research but we will give you we will support you in the options so i think that's about it any more questions uh, are we done Yes, ma'am. These were all the questions. Thank you. So I hope this helps to all the people who had asked. And uh, coming back to Bilva, I feel very grateful, very happy today as we conclude this uh, beautiful festival we had this time. And uh, I again call out all of you to support us in such endeavors and definitely keep watching us even before we come out in the next season of Bilva with a new theme for that year, 2023, before that, a lot is happening at Damaru. So keep checking our websites and media platforms and all of that. There are some, one of this, you know, is this training program, but a part of that, something or other is always happening at Damaru. So stay connected and keep in touch. Thank you so much for joining us this year. Namaskar.